Welcome to this review of the use of personal protective equipment in airborne isolation events. Before we get started, I want to remind everyone that hand washing is a key component of infection control. Alcohol-based hand sanitizer is recommended before and after all patient contact, contact with potentially infectious material, and before putting on and upon removal of personal protective equipment, including gloves. You can also use soap and water for at least 20 seconds. Soap and water are recommended if your hands are visibly soiled. We're going to talk about PPE today. These include gloves, gowns, respiratory protection, and eye protection. If the person is under investigation for an airborne illness, they should be in an airborne infection isolation room if those are available, and we should limit the number of healthcare providers present during the procedure to only those essential for patient care and procedural support to minimize exposure to staff. Photos in this presentation are courtesy of the Rush University Medical Center Respiratory Care Department in Chicago, Illinois, and our model is a respiratory therapist. The CDC has specific instructions for both donning and doffing PPE. Note the specific order for donning, gown, mask, goggles, and then gloves. They also recommend a specific order for removing PPE, gloves, goggles, gown, and last, the mask. Here we have the gown. Make sure to secure the gown around yourself. Don't just let the gown hang open or be loose around the neck or waist. Next comes the mask. For patients under investigation for airborne illnesses, the CDC recommends using a NIOSH certified respirator like the N95. This means you'll need to be fit tested to determine the right size if you haven't already done so. This is typically performed by placing a mask on the healthcare provider and a hood over the head. A substance like saccharin is injected into the hood. If you can taste the saccharin, the mask is not fitted well. The respiratory therapist here has placed the appropriately fitted mask on her face, secured the straps around her head, and pinches the nose of the mask so the form-fitting piece on top of the mask helps mold the mask to her face. Goggles go on over the mask so they don't interrupt the fit of the mask. Note that the respiratory therapist has a pair of goggles that covers the front and sides of the eyes. You can also use a disposable face shield. Three options are shown here. A face shield and surgical mask combo, not useful if your patient is in airborne isolation, goggles, and a full face shield. Gloves are the last item to put on before seeing the patient. We're probably all skilled in putting on non-sterile gloves. Make sure that the gloves fit and the cuff of the glove fits over the cuff of the gown so none of your skin is exposed. Here we have a fully gowned respiratory therapist. Remember that everything facing outward once she goes to see the patient is considered contaminated. This is key when we need to remove the gear. We'll remove the gloves first. Note that the respiratory therapist removes the first glove by grabbing the dirty side of the glove to pull off inside out. She then puts a non-gloved finger under the second glove to remove in the same way, not touching the dirty side of the glove. Now we'll remove the goggles. Don't touch the front of the goggles or face shield. That's the contaminated area. You'll grasp either by the headband if you're using a face shield or the earpieces if you're using a pair of goggles. If they're disposable, throw them away. If not, make sure they go into the designated dirty goggles bin for sterile processing and or cleaning. Now we'll remove the gown. Remember that the gowns are single patient use. Note that the respiratory therapist removes the gown in such a way that she doesn't expose her clothes to the dirty side of the gown and her ungloved hands only touch the clean inside of the gown as she pulls it away from her body. She folds the gown over itself for disposal. If they are disposable, throw them away after use. If they are not disposable, make sure they are placed in the identified laundry space for soiled gowns so they can be laundered after every use. The mask is the last to go. Don't forget that the mask itself is dirty. You'll remove the mask by the straps that secure the mask to your face, either the ear elastics, ties, or elastics that go around the head. 
These are single-use devices, so discard in an appropriate waste container. And don't forget to wash your hands. Thank you for joining me, and be safe out there.